Hello, welcome to day 130 of my art development series. If this is your first time here, my name is Andrew Loren, and this is a series that I'm doing where I document my everyday process as an artist and how I think about growing as an artist. So today is a continuation of the figure drawing that I started yesterday. So this is a overall one, one an hour and a half drawing, um, or maybe, maybe roughly two hours by the time I add in kind of the touch-ups and those finishing details. But let's say a majority of the drawing is done in this hour and a half period. And I'm uploading it over two days where I'm putting the block in yesterday. So if you're interested in seeing the block in, you can see that. And then today I'm actually gonna speed, I'm gonna put the block in in there, but I'm gonna speed it up incredibly quickly so you'll really just get the the adding tone aspect of this um, and there's some interesting things I want to talk about in terms of like my growth as a figure artist so I, you know I've been talking about going through this period of burnout recently where I'm just kind of struggling to, to make art a little bit and it's you know taking me some time to kind of get back into it uh, but importantly I'm not giving up no matter what happens you have to really be consistent and and you'll only if taking a month off or two months off well you'll only hurt yourself and be, then the next time you do find that passion for art, you'll only be regretting that you ever took that time off. Um, so interestingly, there's kind of a paradox right now where on the one hand, I'm struggling to get myself to do art, but then on the other hand, um, I'm also coming into some interesting stylistic aspects of my art that I'm, I'm pretty excited to find. Um, so there's a few things that I've been doing recently that I, I like a lot. So one of them is that, you know, previously I was really trying to use this kind of Jeffrey Watts approach where I make every line count. I start with the porch, start with the head of the figure, kind of work my way down, really use these, these beautiful Loomis rhythms, uh, or, or rather uh, Riley rhythms through the course of the figure and really try and create this like beautiful structure, like one beautiful stroke at a time. Uh, I think the issue is, there's two things. First of all, my talent or my skill level, let's say, is just not at that level right now. So that's one problem. But then the second problem is, I think stylistically, that's, that, that level of kind of like precision or accuracy um, is not necessarily like, it doesn't feel always super genuine to me. Of course, I want some of my lines to be like that. Absolutely. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm personally okay with with you know not having the entire figure be drawn with those particularly you know confident bold strokes and so I've been playing a little bit more with this idea of like having a little bit sketchier lines and I have to be careful about not overdoing it but if you look at this portrait you can see that especially when I'm attacking like certain curves of the body so you know let's say the curves around the waist or let's say uh, the curves that are kind of forming the the shape of the arms um, I was really trying to kind of you know play with those curves and really put down like kind of more than one line and, and just kind of like let it be a little freer let it be a little looser and not be so precise and so confident let's say um, and I think if you, for me, like I find that if I have areas where I have very confident strokes, so for example, I believe like around the shoulders, I have these like really nice confident strokes. If you complement with this, this areas where you have these kind of like sketchier, more abstract strokes, they actually still be, feel believable and feel like they're in, as intentional um, a, a, as the others, or, or, or they kind of like, um, they, they don't have the anxiety, let's say, of some, when you see a piece of art that's, you know, entirely like sketchy lines and there's no confidence from the artist, you can sometimes kind of feel that anxiety of that drawing. Um, and so, you know, I'm kind of like able to push away some of that anxiety, but get a little bit of that looseness into my drawing. Um, so stylistically, it's kind of interesting to kind of come into that right now in this, in this phase. Um, the other thing that I've been pushing, and, and this is something that I learned, so I'm currently taking um, a course with uh, Greg Krutz at the Art Students League of New York. And one of the things that he talks a lot about with drawing the figure is the use of C-curves. And, and this is a consistent lesson, let's say. I mean, I've heard Jeff Watts talk about this. I've heard Stan Prokopenko talk about this. This is a, um, you know, a very commonly held belief, the idea of the C-curves. So this is not new to Greg. Um, but I think what is new is that Greg actually uses them as a way to define the structure of his drawing. So rather than start with Riley rhythms, he starts with C curves. And I started doing this on my figure drawings um, and I'm liking it a lot. And so, you know, what's cool is I'm able to kind of get away with this because I've put in so much intense practice on kind of like internalizing the proportions of the figure that I can kind of get away with not really spending as much time on structure. 
Um, so this is something that probably like a few months ago, I wouldn't have, you know, especially a year or two ago, I wouldn't have been able to do. But now I'm, since I'm like a little bit more confident with proportions, um, I can really kind of like, you know, abandon some of those structural elements uh, in favor of this like use of the C curve. And the other thing that is great about it, or like that has been reinforced by, by Greg, is that when you add these kind of C curves and you kind of let yourself sketch them in and sketch over and over and I have this like looseness, I can actually use that as the, as the basis for the values. So you can actually, I, you know, you'll see me in moments here where I take those lines and I use my stump and I kind of pull them back into the figure and I use that kind of build up of like many, many lines of charcoal as a way to kind of add value to the figure. Um, and so that, that was kind of cool. Um, and just one other thing that kind of came to mind as I, as I wrap up this monologue um, is that one of the things I was really trying to emphasize here was the idea of fall off, which is that, you know, every object can be reduced in some sense to that egg when it comes to adding value. And if you think about the egg, and let's say the egg is kind of standing up like this, there's one light source that occurs at the top, and that's always going to be the brightest area. But then as it kind of gets further away from the light, you know, the, the light kind of falls off and you get those darker values that kind of come through. Um, so the legs are always a little bit darker, the bottom of the torso is always a little bit darker, the, the brightest part is often the shoulders or the forehead, the bottom of the, uh, the head is darker. Um, and there's also this kind of interesting effect that little forms tend to be darker because they capture light very well. So like little surface forms, so like that's why you can get away with, for example, like shadows, big shadows under the breasts or under, under pectoral muscles or something like that, that really kind of like, you, you can really push the values there because smaller objects tend to have more value and be a little bit darker. Uh, so this is something that I kind of implemented in this drawing. So uh, all in all, I really like this figure. Um, this figure actually motivated me a lot to paint, funny enough, where I, I started thinking, oh, you know, if I get back into painting and I want to do a figure, this is actually kind of a beautiful pose. Um, there's not too much to attack, which is nice. You know, it's really focused kind of on the back anatomy and the arms. So it, it, compositionally, it's kind of interesting too, where you kind of don't know, is she dressing? Is she undressing? Is she just kind of posed this way? I kind of like the, the ambiguity of that. Um, so let's see, artistically, there's something that, that might be here. Uh, but I think that's everything for today, and so we will see each other tomorrow for day 131.